past the calendar. Blaise Ingoglia, chairman of the Florida Republican Party. Patricia Mays, a political writer for the Miami Herald. And MSNBC contributor Victoria De Francesco, professor at the University of Texas. Gang, it's great to have you with me this Sunday morning, so thanks for making time for me. Blaze, let me start with you about the all-important 99 winner-take-all delegates for Florida. How could that contest on the 15th really change the dynamic of this race, especially for Marco Rubio, who has said he feels confident that he can win this state and that that will really be when his campaign begins? Hey, Thomas, and welcome to the great state of Florida. Yeah, Florida's 99 delegates, it's important. What that affords is an opportunity for somebody to catch up in a delegate count, or if it's Mr. Trump, if he takes the state of Florida, it allows for him to expand that lead. So Florida's important. We moved our primary to March 15th so we could, win, so we could be winner take all, and we did it because Florida's important, and it's proving out to be so. So when we think about the feasible path forward, Patricia, let me talk to you about what it means for the candidates other than Trump to win the 1,237 votes necessary for the nomination. When we think about Marco Rubio giving a quote yesterday saying this map only gets better for us as we move forward in some other states. He keeps saying, wait until you see this, wait until you see that. Is this basically lining up to be a contested convention over the summer? Well, that would be good news for Rubio. That's certainly what hope but right now he's got a, a bigger problem on his hands which is florida and there are some florida political strategists who wish he were spending more time here i mean he is in idaho today he was in puerto rico last night and no one disagrees with the puerto rico trip because that is a play for florida in and of itself because of its florida's large puerto rican population clustered around orlando but you know, it's starting to get to the point where, with all of the early votes that you mentioned already in the bank, um, getting to the contested convention, you know, is looking harder and harder for him. So as we think about this, Victoria, if Rubio were to get out of this race, do you think that that's going to help Cruz's delegate numbers or potentially John Kasich, who says he is going to win Ohio and he's staying in this race until March the 15th for that critical day? Thomas, I really do see this more as helping Kasich. You know, Rubio and Kasich have a lot of differences, but ultimately they are the establishment lane candidates. And, and one thing I want to say about Florida is when we look at these numbers and we see that Marco Rubio isn't doing that well or as well as we would expect, we can't forget that Florida is a very big state. And aside from that, there's a really big difference between the northern part of Florida and the southern port part of Florida. That southern part of Florida is what we think of traditionally as Rubio territory, where he has a very strong conservative Republican Cuban constituency. But the northern part of Florida is Trump country, is Cruz country. It's more Tea Party conservative. It's more of the Southerners that we think of in terms of other regions of the South. So going forward, we shouldn't be too shocked to see if Marco Rubio loses Florida because of those distinctions within the state. And when we think about the passion that is behind the candidate that is Donald Trump as the outsider, and then we look at the math, uh, I want to read this really stunning quote. A 71-year-old Louisiana woman gave to the New York Times saying, nothing short of Trump shooting my daughter in the street and my grandchildren. There is nothing and nobody that's going to dissuade me from voting for Trump. Blaze, why do you think he's passion passionately ignited so many people that would say something that extreme about how confident they are in their vote for him? Well, I would say that um, Mr. Trump supporters are very passionate, and so is all of the candidates very passionate. I think that's one of the reasons why you're seeing record turnout on the Republican side. It's uh, Mr. Trump is a factor in that, absolutely. But what you notice is that all of the increase in the voters coming out to the polls aren't necessarily voting for Mr. Trump. They're voting for all the candidates. What we're seeing is a lot of enthusiasm on the Republican side, and you're not seeing that on the Democrat side, and that will definitely bode well for us this November. And Patricia, if, if the past is a great indicator and looking at the state of Florida in the general election and Donald Trump were the candidate and say Hillary Clinton were the candidate, how do you think that it would go? Who would carry the state? I think it would be tight. I mean, Trump is a very well-known figure, especially in South Florida. He's got four properties that he owns between Miami-Dade and Palm Beach counties, another three buildings that bear his name. Um, this is the biggest source of revenue for him uh, in terms of his businesses. Just his single biggest revenue producer is the Trump Doral Resort, where he's going to appear today, uh, apparently as part of this golf uh, championship to give out the trophy. So 
he, I don't think he should be underestimated in a general election, despite Hillary Clinton's longstanding ties to South Florida and the fact that she is expected to uh, carry the state on the primary on, on March 15th. All right, Victoria, I'm going to give you the last word, because if these two candidates, a Hillary Clinton and a Donald Trump, are the general election matchup, what do you think that first debate's going to be like? It's going to be raucous and wild, I can tell you that much. But I do think we're going to see Hillary Clinton trying to drill down into the issues. With regards to Florida, we know it was one of the states that was hardest hit by the recession. Uh, Florida also being a swing state, has it, it's not solely Democrat, not solely Republican. So she's going to try to appeal to that middle. So it's fun, I can tell you that much, Thomas. It's fair to say it's quite purple. Uh, Blaze, Patricia, Victoria, thank you both. I appreciate you getting up early for me. Thank you. Uh